super micro software defined storage segment of the SUSECON digital event. My name is Paul McLeod, I'm a product director in the system product management group. Our team is focused on very dense storage servers, so any of the servers that have uh, up to 90 drives in them. I'm Ravi Chintala, systems engineering manager from product office. We work with the leading ISV partners, create solutions, and validate reference architectures on Supermicro hardware. Give you an overview of the Supermicro uh, infrastructure. Supermicro has been around for over 25 years. We started as a motherboard company and were the first to market with dual processor Intel uh, based servers. Our portfolio is very focused on server technology. You won't find um, you again, other accessories there. We're really uh, focused on server as the as the main um, driving factor for our our partners. Um, historically, we built systems uh, from the ground up from that motherboard, and then added complexity, added the the, the features to get better uh, total cost of ownership, greater density in compute and in storage. And in the last few years. We really focus on delivering total solutions to our customers. So this is uh, where we intersect with Thusa as a partner. So basically, building that partner uh, interaction, doing the validations, doing the uh, POCs to you know again build better value and to help our partners uh, deliver solutions, uh, bring them to market sooner so that they can win business. From a portfolio perspective, we have the widest, broadest portfolio of server hardware in the industry. Nobody even comes close to the amount of servers that Supermicro has to offer. Um, so the, the, uh, the, the form factors and what we, what we do in terms of uh, our strategy entering in the, in the server industry is a building block approach. So when we develop one of these key technologies, we're able to leverage it and use it in different form factors and use it across our portfolio, giving our customers time to market and uh, a competitive advantage in, in terms of flexibilities and uh, you know, building a, a system that is unique to their uh, problem. So we solve problems with the, the different form factors. And again, the form factors go from edge computing, uh, embedded devices, all the way up to these very complex blade systems that have networking and uh, tight integration. My team is focused on these very dense storage products, as I, as I said earlier. So if you think in terms of that building block approach, the center column here in blue is the general purpose category. So the general purpose storage servers use industry standard, industry standard components such as ATX motherboards, standard add-on cards, uh, standard, uh, any device that goes into the, to the system is going to be something that is available in the market. So it gives our customers a lot of flexibility to create these unique configurations using what amounts to a, a white box server parts. From there, Supermicro has gotten uh, into optimized uh, storage servers. So really, if you, if you look at the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see our top loading category, in which case we're trying to put as many storage devices in a small form factor as possible. So that today is 90 3.5 inch hard drives in a 4U. Uh, in the middle there, you'll see our, what we call our simply double, which gives us 24 3.5 drives in two U's. And then at the bottom, we have our very popular 1U 12 bay. So that's 1U with 12 3.5 inch drives and four NVMe drives. So with that, we have a lot of tools to deliver 3.5 inch high capacity storage for TCO optimized applications. So unstructured data, object storage, uh, basic file uh, and block storage. If we go to the right hand side, we have our all flash NVMe platforms. So this is somewhat different than compute NVMe, right? So Supermicro NVMe is a key technology and we have NVMe's in every of our every one of our form factors. 
but these are focused on drive density. So we can put 32 NVMEs in that one use space. What does that mean? Well, that means that I can deliver a whole bunch of performance that's very low latency and extremely high capacity. So our current capacity point with these one use systems is a half a petabyte. So, and these are, are again, best of breed systems with 24 DIMMs, dual by 16 slots, the ability to deliver two, you know, 200 gig networking to that, to that environment. So uh, lots of opportunities to deliver performance for both structured and unstructured block and file environments. So with this, we have a lot of flexibility. And our partnership with software um, uh, in soft, software environments, basically, it, uh, it, it is where um, we can show our optimization, how you build this cluster with these building blocks. So what we're trying to deliver for our partners is predictable behavior uh, with these workload optimized servers. So you'll see uh, later in the presentation where you can select the different form factors to meet the requirements of that specific workload, whether it be purely performance, where I'm in the linear range of uh, high performance, to TCO, where I'm basically uh, delivering cost uh, on as the main driver, and we help our customers stay out of that nonlinear range. Um, and on the call, as you heard, uh, Robbie will go into some detail about some of the work we're doing in our labs to make sure that we're delivering the best SUSE uh, application optimized systems. So with that, what do you say, Robbie? Supermicro works with the uh, SUSE on different solutions. Uh, uh, like the Kubernetes, uh, the Kubernetes, they have a platform called CAS. Uh, the Ceph, uh, they have a platform, uh, you know, the product with the SUSE enterprise storage. And the newest coming, upcoming, the product is a SUSE AML stack. Uh, we work with the uh, SUSE on with the uh, different products and different solutions. Uh, we validate uh, every server uh, which we include into the uh, solution. Here, you know, we are presenting the uh, optimized uh, SAP OSDs. You know, the in this uh, the tabular form, like you know, we presented the multiple uh, workload. Category the OSD the sub OSDs, you know, starting with the you know this structured data uh, or like you know the low latency of uh, applications like you know the performance uh, performance HDD or uh, throughput, and from there again we are going for capacity and extra large uh, where it takes for uh, unstructured data uh, like uh, objects, so the each flower uh, takes into uh, different uh, capacity. So, you know, the, the first one, the performance flash, uh, which we can get up to 480 terabytes, you know, this is a really uh, high-end uh, NVMe. It takes around 30 uh, NVMe drives in one node. Uh, that gives you the, the huge uh, storage, like, you know, it gives you almost half petabyte, you know, the storage in one server. Uh, so to take this one, like, you know, you need a, a better uh, throughput. Uh, this uh, flower can support, you know, HPC and uh, block object. Uh, in the same way, like, you know, the, the performance HDD, you know, this can give us around 352 terabytes. You know, here we are using the SAS drives, and we are using the 4 by 10 the, the network, and this will perfectly fits into the, you know, the structured the block and object uh, workload. The next one is a throughput, and here also similar characteristics, and this fits into the same uh, area, like um, block and object. And here we are using the 4 by 25 uh, network um, for the th to use that uh, throughput. Uh, the next uh, two are uh, the capacity and uh, the extra large. Uh, the capacity uh, flower, you know, we can give us around 992 terabytes, you know, the, from 31 drives per node, you know, that's a pretty a large number of drives, you know. Uh, this is basically, it can be used for archiving uh, workload. The next one is uh, the extra large. 
um, this is you know the 1240 terabytes you know the, the usable storage uh, this system can take around 39 drives per node uh, this perfectly fits into the archiving and cold storage supermicro uh, works with the uh, SUSE you know building uh, different uh, reference architectures uh, based on uh, different uh, hardware portfolio we have uh, you know here you know just we are giving a uh, uh, snapshot of you know the what we can choose uh, out of you know the top of the rack switches uh, to uh, the infra nodes as well as uh, the the vast variety of uh, OSD nodes here. So the uh, the top of the rack switches you know we have an option to go with the, the SMC operating system as well as you know we can go with the, the Cumulus operating system. So the Cumulus can take uh, the network uh, switches up to 40 G, 42 to 100 GB uh, bandwidth switches. You know these are perfectly suit, you know, suitable for uh, low latency and uh, throughput um, applications. And the in the, the middle place, like in the middle column, where you are seeing, like where we are seeing this uh, control plane, uh, we have admin node, gateway nodes, and monitor nodes. Uh, in these nodes. Uh, we are we we can use multiple uh, server portfolio for supermicro what we have like ultras uh, one u ultras you know the, we can use high dense uh, the big twin nodes uh, the next uh, option is uh, OSD node options here you know the next layer is a uh, OSD node options uh, here we have multiple uh, flowers like you know depends on the uh, workloads uh, the one is a structured data you know this perfectly fits into the you know the low latency the high throughput applications uh, like you know hpc or maybe you know the, the database applications and the next one is a mixed workload the mixed workload is a the ultra node uh, this gives us a 352 terabytes you know the 11 drives per node uh, this is a kind of a minimum four osd node and this is a mixed workload and you can create multiple pools uh, depends on the uh, your uh, application requirements like you know you can create a, the SSD pool or you know you can create a, the SAS pool. The next one is a throughput and sequential and this is a SSG family uh, what we have and which you know this is a simply double uh, which can give us a 672 terabyte uh, usable storage you know then this can take around 21 drives per node you know the again we are using these uh, four minimum OSD nodes you know all these options you know these are we chose you know four OSD nodes but you know is this can easily expandable and um, that's where SUSE comes into the picture it's easy to in step comes into the picture easy to scale up you know just if there's a requirement you know you can add a, a new node uh, to get a you know the more space the uh, as you saw in the, in the the previous slides, the high performance segment is an area that we're seeing more and more uh, customers looking for higher density, higher uh, capacity servers. So this is an area that Supermicro has a leadership position in, in terms of a wide selection of all flash NVMe uh, based systems. So in these systems, each has 32 NVMEs. They're dual processor with 24 DIMMs and two by 16 PCI slots. So really a huge amount of horsepower uh, and a lot of capacity to, to, uh, to, to be driven by that horsepower. Um, in one of the innovations that, that uh, you know, that one of the areas that Supermicro really ha has focused our efforts is in the new form factors. So uh, a, a challenge that has come up with um, with flash media is flash media is d delivered in um, what, what you might call a legacy format, the U.2 format. Uh, that shape was designed for a s mechanical spinning device. So um, in the last two years, uh, the flash vendors have said, hey, we can probably get more capacity per node if we change this format a little bit especially in a 1U server. And that's where we've seen this uh, new generation of flash devices come out. 
So the NF1 was a, a, an early example and Intel's ruler was another early example. Um, but now there is an industry standard called EDSFF and Supermicro has built multiple servers to support EDSFF. This comes in a long format, which would be very much uh, positioned for uh, read intensive applications. So very high capacity read intensive applications. The, you can think of AI workloads where you've got um, thousands of reads uh, with, on a single write. So E1L is a great server for that. And then you have the E1S, which is the short format, which essentially gives you a great uh, equivalent capacity to um, uh, many of the devices, the, the um, smaller devices out there, um, but a much better thermal and power performance profile. So E1S, I can put very high uh, TDP processors in the server. I can drive that flash to uh, an incredible amount of performance and uh, deliver still a very uh, large footprint of storage. So really this whole portfolio, uh, whether, you're, whether you're going to the new form factors or want to go and stick with U.2 for a little longer, we have the server that can, can deliver this. So basically 32 NVMEs, whether it's U.2 or one of the new form factors. And that's kind of surprising uh, for a lot of people to know that, hey, well, I can still fit 32 of the U.2s if you're, uh, if you're not really ready to move to these newer form factors. One of the, the uh, applications and one of the, one of the great ways that we've leveraged these servers is through SUSE validation. So we've got base server qualifications and validations, as well as validations with Ceph. So someone can build a very high capacity uh, storage uh, portfolio, uh, basically a data lake type uh, setup for their, um, for their AI workloads with GPUs. So really we see this as being one of the areas that has a lot of growth potential and a lot of business potential for um, people doing GPU and AI. And with that, I, I'd like to turn it back over to Ravi who talk about some of the integration of the applications on the SUSE platform. Yeah, SUSE and Supermicro, you know, work together uh, to create these uh, backup solutions. And SUSE, you know, the internal, you know, they, they worked with their uh, their ISVs uh, to certify, validate uh, their backup applications uh, with the, the SUSE access uh, on the Supermicro hardware. So the, the Supermicro has a vast variety of uh, hardware, you know, we can choose uh, for different backup of applications. Uh, the, mainly, this is a kind of a, a unstructured and archiving sol solutions. Uh, and this perfectly goes into the, you know, uh, the low cost. Uh, the Supermicro with SES uh, uh, reduces the customer's equation and management cost. And uh, improved SLA allows customers to respond to their end users by meeting backup windows and recovery times. The scalability, the growth in capacity and performance is achieved by simply adding different capacity servers. So, you know, whenever they need uh, more storage, you know, they can pick and choose the hardware, you know, depends on the capacity to serve their uh, end users for the backup applications. To the enterprise uh, software, like, you know, Supermicro validated solutions are significantly cheaper to acquire. Uh, compared with the uh, the traditional appliance-based uh, solutions, the storage solutions. Given the lower cost, uh, customers can now afford to keep more data online uh, as opposed to on tape. Uh, you know, the lowered backup speeds, in the lowered backup windows, and the recovery times. The SES is a, you know, highly scalable, like, you know, we can deploy initial solution to their current needs and then add a new storage a server uh, whenever they need uh, a, the more storage. You know, uh, you don't need to spend right away, you know, to put that the whole infrastructure 
uh, compared to like you know compared to the traditional storage appliances. OpenStack and Kubernetes, you know, these are perfect fit into the you know SEP. Like you know, the OpenStack and the Kubernetes requires uh, storage. You know, the OpenStack has is uh, the traditional uh, uh, Swift and the Cinder, but you know uh, the SEP can provide all three options uh, to OpenStack and Kubernetes together, uh, uh, like the Nova. Uh, the glance and cinder can use uh, block and object storage and uh, uh, based on the the Ceph user survey like you know the Ceph RBD is the almost half of the deployments you know being used you know the 48 percent uh, usage in large clouds with over thousand cores uh, this solution we have validated uh, internally uh, with the uh, the four OSD nodes and five compute, you know, the we sharing the controllers and monitor nodes, and dedicated ad admin node, and we, we have a high available uh, management IPMI switches, and the uh, data switches. So by enabling the cloning for Glance, you know, the, it makes it the the faster, uh, you know, spawning the the new image. Uh, the Kubernetes, like you know, requiring uh, both dynamic and static volumes uh, for Kubernetes parts. Like you know, this will be a perfect. The SES is a per, the perfect solution uh, for the Kubernetes, uh, which can provide uh, the dynamic storage as well as the you know the whenever they need. The volumes for container workloads can be utilized as needed and made available to wherever in the Kubernetes cluster the workload is deployed. Uh, the Kubernetes is an upcoming solution uh, for uh, SUSE. You know, the SUSE has a, their own platform, uh, container as a, the container as a service platform. So we are working with the SUSE to integrate the CASP uh, with the uh, OpenStack and on the Supermicro hardware. The next uh, use case is uh, uh, the analytics, like uh, where we can use the, the high-end uh, NVMe flash um, storage. Um, this is the perfect solution, like you know, the for the data lakes platform. Uh, the data, this is a centralized solution, like you know, the, the data lakes can be used, like MapReduce, Spark, Elasticsearch, NoSQL, uh, and Splunk. Kafka, um, these can be supported through various protocols like CephFS, you know, the S3, S3A. And, uh, you know, these can be, there are various use cases like, you know, data pipeline, AAML, like HPC, and like, you know, archival for Spark and NoSQL. The reference architecture here, what we have used, uh, uh, Supermicro, the 1029U TN10 10, 10RT, uh, which has uh, like you know uh, dual proc Cascade Lake CPUs, you know, with the 24 cores, uh, with 12 micron 32 GB the DIMMs, and we have uh, three monitor nodes and you know four storage nodes uh, with the High capacity, the the micron NVMe flash drives, like you know the which is a which can give us a almost. Here we have used the the two two x replication factor because of the NVMe. We don't need a three x replication, and the OSD process can consume large amounts of CPU while doing small block operations. Uh, hence, we use like you know the high CPU core count generally results in higher performance per I.O. intensive workloads. Uh, a 25 GB network is required for leverage maximum black block performance benefits of a NVMe-based Ceph cluster. For throughput intensive workloads characterized by large sequential I.O., the Ceph performance is more likely to be bound by maximum network bandwidth of the cluster. So for throughput intensive workloads, uh, we recommend uh, 50 GB to 100 GB uh, network cards, you know, the the network. 
the NVMe SSD technologies, you know, the basically significantly improves safe, perform safe performance uh, and responsiveness, uh, in, especially where the safe block storage is preferred, uh, where massive amount of small block random access is found. Uh, the, here you can see the, the four megabits object read. Uh, you know, the the throughput we are uh, seeing almost you know 40 gig uh, depends on the uh, the multiple simultaneous threads. You know, uh, when we go with the 32 simultaneous threads, you know, you, you are seeing even the, the CPU utilization is going up. You know, the, uh, this is a kind of a, you know, the, uh, the RADOS benchmark, uh, you know, we uh, performed you know, internally. Uh, in this slide, you know, the, we are providing uh, the raw capacity of the, you know, the uh, the voice denotes uh, depends on the number of voice denotes we are providing in a rack uh, with the uh, different uh, flowers. Uh, the when four voice denotes for flash OSD, we have a 169 terabytes. Uh, you know, if for the same, uh, if you go with the high performance OSDs, you know, uh, with the same num same count of uh, four uh, OSDs, you know, we are getting 384 terabytes. Uh, like that, you know, uh, we are kind of coming up with these six OSDs, eight OSDs uh, per cluster. You know, we are presenting uh, with the uh, different uh, usable storage, you know, for e each rack. So this gives us an idea, like, you know, how easy to uh, scale out uh, to the SEF, you know, uh, with the supermicro hardware. SUSE and Supermicro have more than 25 combined years of experience in enterprise IT solutions, including storage. Together, you know, we provide unique solutions. Uh, SUSE Enterprise Storage is an uh, enterprise-ready version of an open source software-defined solution. It also offers a range of configurations. It fits into various use cases, enables you to create customized configurations based on your specific needs. Supermicro offers a wide portfolio of hardware choices, including greenest and most energy efficient x86 servers on the market. So you can build the perfect solution for your data center, reduce total cost of ownership by controlling your energy demands. So Supermicro also is, again, uh, looking at partnerships and uh, helping develop the uh, ecosystem for our hardware with all of the software partners here. The SUSE YES certified hardware is a great step forward in terms of our partnership and in terms of giving our customers uh, fully vetted uh, solutions for things like Ceph and other applications. And that concludes our session for today. Um, I, we have our contact information. Uh, so if you'd like to get, uh, like to send us an email, uh, you can reach us here uh, on this last slide. Learn more at supermicro.com powered by Intel.